Welcome to our extra series 2.5 about Dialogue 1. My goal is to spend about five minutes to provide some useful guidance for dialogue writing this week. There was some guidance in our recording from last Thursday, and uh, this short series will build on that. Our mission, above all, is to explore the good life and the ideas and proposals of our authors under the topic of the good life. Our mission is to write creative intellectual conversation uh, between fictional or real characters about specific topics. And our mission in writing dialogues is to show philosophy at its grassroots intellectual conversation between friends or between strangers on philosophical topics. There are several parts to any dialogue. Let's summarize what are the parts of a dialogue. First, there is the setting. Sometimes I call this the start. It is sort of the actual world situation in which your two characters are. Um, I've provided in our Dialogue 1 start uh, a setting for you to use. Uh, you may change that setting. You may introduce a setting you prefer to work with. It's not required that you use that setting. It's fair to say the setting is the scene in which your, your dialogue takes place. In any dialogue, there'll be characters, fictitious or real characters, they may have names or just letters. Uh, you could be uh, philosophers. You could portray a, a dialogue between like Socrates and Aristotle, if you wish. For our first dialogues, I think it's a good idea to have like about two characters to work with. Another part of our dialogue are the authors and the ideas that we'll be showing in the course of the conversation. For Dialogue 1, our goal is to show the ideas of one author. So I propose that you choose between Socrates and the Apology and Aristotle. And when you show ideas, you'll show ideas that are important for understanding their thought. And a good estimate is about two or three uh, important ideas from that author. Another important part of the dialogue is the philosophical question. It's the question which gets the conversation going and a question which uh, perhaps the two persons might not be able to agree to uh, or perhaps at the end they'll agree. Another part of the dialogue are two key terms, usually terms from the author that you're showing. And your goal will be to define those terms within the conversation. So one person talking to another may use like a term that's important to Aristotle, and that character would also define that term for the person they're talking to. Our goal is to define two terms. You can define, anyone may define more terms than, than two if they wish. Finally, our dialogues are to be two full typed pages, which is fairly short. In order to make the most of the space, we will single space our spacing. Um, you can put space spaces between speakers, or you could put no spaces between speakers but all of our spacing will be a single space to make the most of those two pages. Uh, how to think about writing a dialogue? Uh, well, it's a lot like writing a play. If you've ever had experience reading or writing plays, it's a lot like screenwriting, uh, the writing that uh, people writing for movies or to make films do, you know, describing uh, conversation between their characters. What's different about the dialogue writing is that it's focused. 
there's a specific question that uh, your two characters are going to talk about. So your philosophical question is perhaps the most important item in your uh, dialogue. It's the thing you want to decide in advance before you start your writing, and it's the question that you want to sort of stay close to um, as your characters have their conversations and as you, you know, give the ideas of one of your authors. You can look at a one-page uh, sample of a dialogue in our syllabus that shows the first page of a dialogue. And I'm also going to show you now uh, the full two pages of that same dialogue on our screen. So let's look at this sample together. Now first you'll see that there are two full pages, top to bottom, written, and that there are single spacing throughout. However, in this case, the author has put spaces between each of the speakers. I think this is a good practice. I don't find that quotations are needed, um, but you're certainly welcome to use quotations if you think it'll help uh, distinguish the uh, dialogue or clarify the dialogue. Notice that the setting is at the start, and the setting is about two to three lines long. I found this to be an important limit um, for our dialogue writing. Um, many times when we first write a dialogue, we spend a lot of time on the setting because it's you know fun and important to develop a setting. However, it takes away from our showing of the ideas. So. Uh, I propose when you write your settings, if you write your own setting, is to keep it short to about two to three lines, five lines perhaps at the maximum. <laughs> Another good advice I have, um, well, have we mentioned how important your philosophical question is, and in our dialogue start, I've proposed one of two questions that you might use for your first dialogue. Some, very straightforward and interesting questions. Importantly, um, it's good to put your question close to the beginning of your dialogue so that you'll have lots of room uh, in which to explore that question. And for the purpose of grading, it's important to underline your philosophical question so that the grader knows what you intend your question to be. In this dialogue sample, there are several ideas that the authors teach us that are given. So highlighting now the ideas delivered by the author. This will vary from dialogue to dialogue. And uh, my view is that you should put the ideas down that you understand, that, um, that you can feel comfortable writing about. Uh, so ideas that are beyond your understanding, um, you should simply pass by and focus on what you do understand. And then finally, on the sample are words and capitals. I would like that when you define your terms in your conversation, just at the place where you define the term, you put it into all capital letters for grading purposes so that the grader can see where you intend to define terms. So here you'll see that more than two terms were defined and in each case, an Aristotelian definition is used to define, to give a definition. Um, I want to say also that definitions uh, should be your best effort. Uh, you'll find the lecture notes provide all kinds of good definitions of our terms. You don't need, certainly don't need to quote uh, directly from the lecture notes. Um, you know, work the terms in a way that seems natural to you in your conversation. And on my side, uh, as a grader, um, I mostly are interested that you, you make the effort at a definition rather than that the definition is exactly right. <laughs> and finally, above all, I would like that you have fun uh, writing Dialogue 1. On this occasion, we'll be showing the ideas of one author, and it's certainly important to me that you have a good and enjoyable and uh, learning rich experience as you're doing your writing. Well, I think that's a good place to stop uh, on Thursday. 
Uh, my hope is that we'll meet in person and we'll have lots of time to talk about the dialogues if students wish to.